Hello everyone, welcome to my shop. My name is Steve and today I've got a project I want to bring you along with me. Ring gear and pinion for a 1914 Chevrolet. <clears throat> Two of the parts, let me show it to you. Uh, they're the same part, but uh, they're both defective. They've both been abused and, and uh, so we've decided, or I've, de I've decided to uh, make new ones or make a new one. Uh, I had a piece of material and I, I cut it off of an old, um, I believe it's an old axle shaft out of an old truck or something. Uh, you can tell where the, the uh, this has been damaged right in through here so they threw it away but you know you can't throw anything away, right? So this will work work out just fine. Now the the thick part is thick thick part is the thickest part of this part is these threads right here. And as luck would have it, right here is just the right amount. It's just the right thickness. It might have to take off 10, 20 thousandths, maybe, maybe not that much, to get to our thread uh, uh, size. And the rest of it all gets machined smaller. So uh, I've already cut this off of the, the longer piece. Um, and so this is, those threads are gonna go right in here. And the rest of this is gonna be machined later. Now this, this part here go away and we'll just be left with the square. Should be okay on the square. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully that'll be enough. These are pretty deep, but let me measure that and make sure we're okay. Anyway, that's the game plan. Uh, this is the, let me bring you over here. <clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome to my shop, or back to my shop anyway. Uh, my name is Steve and uh, today we're going to uh, be working on a project. Um, I started it the other day and I can't even remember if I videoed it or not, but it, it was the pinion shaft, uh, holds the pinion gear on the rear end on a Baby Grand 14 Chevrolet. Um, this is the this is the part I made, and it's uh, it's great, works good, everything's uh, to, in tolerance, and uh, but there's only one little error or not an error. <clears throat> I made it out of an old uh, axle shaft, and it was a spline shaft here on the end, and I thought, well, I should be able to get enough meat out of there. Uh, there should be enough meat left on the bone to to get my square out of here, but. If you look closely, we were able to save it. His side and this side are, are not bad, but these two opposite sides here, there's not a lot of meat there in the middle. Now the original one, the original one, you can see the, the four sides are nice and smooth, and but the corners are rounded off, which is uh, where I thought I was gonna be okay. I thought the, the four edges would be all right there, but as it turns out, it's just a little bit lean on two of the sides. I don't Perhaps know if I could not. use it or not. Um, it's, it would be hard. I mean, be a little close. Uh, I don't want to take a chance. These uh, uh, ring gear and pinions were uh, like 800 bucks a pop for, for those to get um, produced, um, which I did not make them. But the, uh, uh, where's the, oh, it's in, it's in the lathe. The pinion gear is in the lathe right now, and I'm trying to reset up because I've used the lathe, the lathe since I, I made this uh, uh, the other part there. Uh, but you can see how this one, how it's the keyway's been chowdered pretty good, and uh, it's not in good shape at all. Uh, the rest of it is is usable, uh, but that got chewed up pretty bad. So we're gonna duplicate this. I, I just got in a piece of um, 
this is a piece of one inch and three eighths, uh, 4130. And uh, we're gonna try and remachine our our part here and do it again. So my my first attempt was kind of a uh, a practice practice run, you might say. <clears throat> so what I want to do today is, well, besides make that part, is first thing I want to do is uh, set up my angle on the uh, a taper. I want to set up the taper on the because uh, this pinion gear uh, has a taper in it, and I'm just setting it up right now and. Uh, that's close enough for a measurement. Okay, I got the square. Now what I'm going to do is run a dial indicator in here and uh, get it running zero with the uh, compound. So we're going to do that next. So I've got got that all set up. So now we're going to take this away and put our uh, other dial indicator in here. So let's do that. Put this on here. And it just when it's all the way open, it just fits on here like that. Okay. And so I'm gonna turn. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll move you guys on the other side. Alright, I've got the pointer right at the horizon. So we should be dead, dead nuts in the middle here. So let's we'll bring it over and try this again. It's not looking good there because it's going to hit, the side's going to hit right here before we know it. So, let me turn this out a little more this way. Bring this in right there. Okay, now we're in the Compound. Let's let me go in further. What oh, starts hitting over there? I see a problem. We're on a slant here. This needs to be. This needs to be lower here, and this needs to turn. Like so. so. Now we're more level that way, and our center, our center should be right there.
Test fit here. Oh, baby, look at that. Oh, locked on tight. <laughs> Come on. Oh, wow. That's on there. There we go. It's like socks on a rooster. No. <laughs> Good as you're gonna get. Dang. Had it on there that time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>